In this video, we're going to continue to talk about LibreCAD and we're going to see some more advanced features, but we're going to increase the level of difficulty little by little. So we're going to see some extra and more advanced things about the grid and also we will scale or resize the image in the perfect size. So we're going to see how we can do that using the scale with the number, uh, with a parameter, or we can do it with a reference. So it means that I can tell the exact number to scale exactly the image that I have imported in the previous video. So in the previous video, we focus on importing from the external. We, we focus on how we can use images and uh, CAD references. In this video, we're gonna go more into deep here with these um, various commands. We're also gonna talk about the polyline, which is a more complex line. And it's used uh, for many reasons. One of these reasons is to create an offset that is completely closed and uh, can be used for uh, to represent a thickness, like the thickness of a wall in architecture, or also in engineering and other fields. We're also going to start to talk about the editing tools here, and we're going to see the the most uh, the basic ones, which are the move, rotate, and scale. And we can see that here in LibreCAD, we can use this also to create arrays like polar arrays and standard arrays like this. So let's get started, and I'm going to start with the grid. So how we can set up the grid, how we can customize it. Now I just want to start with a new document so that we, can, we are all in the same page. And in that drawing that you saw, I already customized the grid. So I want to call this lesson five, and we're going to start with the grid. I think that polyline is an excellent tool if used with the grid, because grid is going to give you like that base that you can work on. It's, it's like a reference, but in this case, it's not a precise reference. We only know the spacing. Now, if you see the standard grid, you can just zoom in and zoom out. It's going to kind of regenerate every time. So it, it has no limits. It's kind of infinite and it's going to, again, regenerate over and over. Now, you can change that. You can go to the options. And this, in this case, we're not going to go here in the application preferences where we went most of the time. But I will go here in the current drawing preferences. Now, here. You can see I can set up other stuff, but first of all, you can set up the units in terms of length and angles. And then you have also the possibility to set up the grid. You can also deactivate the grid from here, so not show it at all. And you also have another type of grid, which is isometric grid. Now, I'm just going to show you here this isometric grid real quick. So. You can see it looks a little bit strange. It's another type of grid. And I, this one here can be used if you want to like draw in 3D. Now, for example, if I get the standard line here, and let's activate also the snap. Snap on the grid. This is the one that we're going to use usually when we work with the grid. So you can see here I can draw. And it's like I am drawing a 3D shape. So I want to do like a box, right click to repeat, and that's it. So you can see how easily it is to draw in like a fake 3D effect here. Now, in my opinion, it's better to export your 2D file in Rhino or SketchUp or another 3D application and just extrude it. It's going to be easier. But if you want, you can create your 3D also here, your 3D drawings. And this is why you have this kind of grid right here. Now I'm going to go back to the current drawing preferences. Now you have also here other options for the widgets and the toolbars. So you can like uh, go more, go into deep here, uh, choose a different type of device. Uh, you can reload the style sheet. But well, let's focus now on the grid and the other things. So I'm going to go back to the orthogonal grid, which is the standard one, meaning uh, vertical and horizontal lines. And this is what, what you can change if you want a fixed grid and not auto-generated 
grid. So if I say, okay, I just want 10 units interval, so spacing on the X and spacing on the Epsilon, say, okay. Now you can see that this is gonna be like a bigger grid. So these are 10 units. And remember that by default, the units in LibreCAD are millimeters. So this is 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters. So if I go all the way up, this is gonna be, let's get a line here and go all the way up like this. You can already see the information down here in the bottom left. So this is gonna be 100 millimeters. So if I wanna reach one meter, I need to go all the way up here and that's gonna be one meter. So you can see is it continues to generate and you can see these major lines, which always represent like 10 units. And when I zoom in, it's gonna get smaller, but to the limit of 10 units, it, it will not go smaller than 10 units. This is why this is not regenerating, it's just gonna be fixed. So you can use your own setting here, depending on what you wanna do. Now, in my case, if I'm gonna show you here this uh, other drawing. There you go. Now here I've chosen to set the document grid this way. So I've chosen to use the um, centimeters. So you can also change here the main drawing unit. So you can change it here. You can change it also here. This is gonna be like the defaults for the new drawings and that for the document. So right here, for example, this line, this one here is almost 10 centimeters. And well, this one here should be like two meters or something. So, okay, this is a piece of a polyline actually, so I cannot select it like that. So let's just get this one here. And this will be 120, so yeah, we are in centimeters, definitely. And it's we are in the correct size. So you can choose to do that here. So you can set up centimeters, you can set up the format. Now you can use architectural, scientific, depending on what you need to do. Decimal will be fine. And in my case, I don't need this precision right here depending on what you need to do, but I'm doing architecture, so I don't need that precision. I can turn this off to zero, so I don't need it. And here also, I, you can change decimal degrees, gradients, other formats for the angle. And this is the preview that is gonna show you how, it's, how they're gonna look like. Now in the grid, I've set 10, so I have like a 10 centimeters spacing, and then it's gonna like increase every time I zoom. But if you want, you can also uh, make this bigger, like 100, it means 100 centimeters for me. So it means that I'm gonna have a grid on each meter. So if I say, okay, we're gonna see here that I have a point each meter of space. And this can help me either to, to put something in, in the correct size, like this image here, but also to work, for example, with a polyline. Just gonna show you here polyline. So the polyline is a really handy tool because first of all, it's gonna create a perfectly closed shape that you can like export in a 3D application and then can be extruded. And it works beautifully with a grid because if I working with a module of one meter, I can now draw, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meters times one, two, three, four. So I can just count count the meters and I can quickly create a room or a house just like that. Now, when I need to place the last point, it's better not to click, but to choose close. So you type close with your keyboard and press enter. And this is gonna perfectly close this shape right here. You can see when you click 